How's it going, doggy people? Hope you all are doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to use toys to reinforce your dog's behavior versus food. Sometimes food it can be too exciting for dogs or the value of food is too high and it makes them more excited. Sometimes dogs will not even chew the food and they just swallow it whole and they end up gagging and coughing on it or it just gets them so excited. So we're going to be working on getting your dog's play drive to increase today instead of just their food drive. So if you're interested in that, then let's get started. So for some people who have dogs that are just either puppies or older dogs that are just really, really driven by food, it's really easy to work with them using food, but at the same time, it's really difficult because they just, they're so hyper-focused on the food, they don't really understand what we're trying to teach them, or they're just so focused on it that they're, it's like ADHD, you know, they can't focus on anything else because the food gets them so excited. And the point of using food as positive reinforcement is not to get them super excited, but just to be able to reward them and say, hey, I like this, keep doing this. So it's a paycheck for them. But sometimes that can be a double-edged sword. So today we're going to be working on how to get your dog to increase their play drive. Now remember, when we're using any kind of reinforcement with our dog, they decide what is reinforcing. So say we're using toys. Your dog may be a fan of squeaky toys, a tennis ball, tug toys, whether it's the rope kind, they could like um, the rubber kind of toys, they could like, they might like the fancy kind of toys like this that looks like a little hair dryer. This once had a squeaker in it, which is now dead. Um, it has a little rope tug at the end of it. Um, you know, this is one of those little fancy ones that comes in those little um, pet, you know, subscription boxes, um, you know, that you get. So this could be, you know, a toy that your dog likes. Um, they could have something like this. This is a little felt dumbbell I got from uh, Mud Bay, which is a uh, local pet store. Love them. Um, don't worry, I'm not endorsed by them. I just love the little things that they have. Um, but this is, you know, something that could be kind of cool. I like to use this for teaching um, Adonis to retrieve items for me. Um, or you have something like this, which this is a cat toy, but you can even make your own giant kitty toy for your dog. So if I'm using a toy like this, uh, the dog version is called a flirt pole. F-L-I-R-T pole. Flirt pole. It's a really interesting toy that you can use with dogs that have a very high prey drive or something that likes to stalk and jump and chase things, you know, kind of furry, fluffy little things like cats, you know, their prey drive. So uh, you can even make your own at home or you can go out and buy some that are, you know, basically just a PVC pipe. Um, you know, I round off the edges with something soft like this. I will put a rope at the end of it um, and then connect something, um, either a, a pre-made toy or I can make my own, you know, something out of fake fur, uh, make it nice and fluffy and puffy. And you can stuff it, put a squeaker in it, or you can make your own toy. You can make whatever you want at the end of it. Uh, make your own toys. If you want to use a braided toy as a tug toy, um, you know, just be wary of the ropes and strings that can kind of tear and tether and wither away because we don't want our dogs ingesting anything like that. So if you're making your own toy at home, um, be careful about what you put into it, but it's it's awesome because you can really um, personalize it and you know exactly what's going into it. And it's usually a lot cheaper than what you can buy at the pet stores. But say I were working with a very hyperactive puppy, whether it's a Border Collie or a German Shepherd or one of those typical, you know, high drive dogs that really likes to go after prey. I would probably use something like this, uh, a flirt pole though, an appropriate sized one um, for a dog that's a lot stronger than this. Um, but I can, you know, take this with me and keep the little toy and say I'm just walking like this with my dog and they, they see something. We're either working on distractions or they're reactive to other dogs or cats. And then I can, you know, take this and just kind of you know, just kind of wiggle it a little bit, like right away, you know, say I'm the dog and I'm looking in this direction and I want to get this just in the corner of their eyes. As soon as they see it, I can play with it and move it away and move it back in another direction and redirect their attention away from what distraction they're looking at, whether it's a bird or a cat or a person or a dog or a bike or a car or whatever it is. So I'm able to use this controlled prey item to get my dog's attention away from what they're looking at and back onto me. And you can jingle it, you can, you can have it drag on the floor, you can make it kind of fly around, make a little noise. Um, you know, you, you can get really interesting with this, which is the, the key. You want to be interesting with your toy. Um, you know, just like with your body, when you're moving around, when you're using treats and trying to get your dog to come back to you off leash, you kind of move around a little bit, they come back, they get that reward. Um, with this, their reward could be that they follow it or, you know, occasionally let them catch the toy, let them kind of play with it. If it's strong enough, they can play tug a little bit and then you can work on a really good release cue. So they, they drop it um, and then you can have it back and then it goes to being calm again. Um, so say you're working on distractions, you know, your dog can be um, you know, walking and pulling a little bit ahead or they're, you know, staring at another dog and you can just kind of a little bit of this and they go and they kind of chase it and then it's calm again. And then you can be excited again and then it's calm again. And they can go and kind of chase it a little bit and then it's calm again. And so it's kind of, you know, you think about it as pressure, release. Pressure, 
release. So the pressure is stimulation. We're stimulating our dog's mind, getting them excited, and they can get a little bit of a reward. And then we can, you know, break it down and have them nice and calm again. Um, I use the same technique when working with horses or fearful animals, such as dogs um, and cats, where say they're afraid of an item and I'm, you know, I'm not just going to shove this in their face. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of stimulation. So say I want to get them used to me touching them, then I can just rub this on them a little bit. You know, this would be pressure and that would be release. You know, pressure and release. Then over time, I can you know flop this random and they won't really care much. Um, now, say you have a tug toy, um, then you can take a toy. So this is just here. I'll just use this as an example. So say you have a little little handle on your tug toy and you just keep it in your pocket with you. And then when your dog is doing really well, you can take it out. Hey, buddy, and slap it on your leg and get really excited. And they can take it and tug it for a second. And then you can say, okay, release, drop whatever your word is. You know, drop it. They let go. Good job. Let's go back to working. And the next time they're going to be working for that time they get to tug. So, you know, just like working for their next reward of a treat, you can use your tug toy. Um, hopefully it's a little bit <laughs> better than this, but this is, again, just example. You can make your own tug toy. Have a nice handle on it. Um, you know, just keep it on your thumb, put it around your wrist or something or in your pocket. Um, and then just they play with it and then you take it away. And you put it back in your pocket and you're calm again. You go back to working, you know, a couple seconds later, you know, hey, good job. And you get to really tug at it and really play and really let them get excited and then have a good drop it cue. If your dog gets so excited by the toy that they don't want to drop it or they don't have a good drop it cue or release cue, and they hold on to the toy, you can let them play with it um, and just let them carry it. Sometimes you could just let them carry the toy as if it is, um, you know, just their, their security blanket. You know, they could just kind of hold on to their toy and just kind of chew it and, and there they go and they're fine. They're comfortable with that and that's their reward. Um, or you can work on it at home where you have a treat or another toy and get this exciting. They let go of this one and I can give them this one or toss it or do whatever, or if they're holding on to it, I can take a treat and hold it in front of their nose. They let go of the toy to get the treat, and that's a good trade or a good release. And then you start pairing the behavior over time with a word, where you hold the treat there, they let go of it, they get their treat. Over time, you can pair it with drop it, release, let go, whatever you want, something very simple and very consistent. Over time, you can give them the cue without a treat or another toy nearby, and then when they let go of this toy, they get it back again, and that becomes their reward. I'll go over a more detailed video of how to teach your dog drop it in another video, um, but this for now is just to teach your dog how to work for play. Um, really up your dog's play drive. Uh, be exciting. You can't just take a toy and here you go. You know, just kind of throw it at them. They're not really going to care much. You know, <laughs> you just throw it at the dog. A lot of dogs don't really find that exciting. So you have to get exciting. You have to slap it on the ground, let it wiggle, you know, maybe take a stick and just drag it on the ground. It makes a weird noise and they can, you can get their attention that way. And, and if you have a ball, you can bounce it in the air or toss it just a couple of feet away from you. So they're not having to pull you to go get the toy. Um, that's why having a good rope toy or a long toy on a stick, um, you know, on a rope and a stick, the flirt pole is really, really helpful for a lot of dogs. So hopefully that helps. Um, I hope that this will help some people out there who are having issues with their dogs that are just too excited by food. Using toys as a reward is a really great way to work with your dog and that would be probably the next step I would move on to when when fading away from the treats, either toys or real life reward because you can always have a, a Kong with a, a rope you know, tied to it um, and have your, that as your dog's just reward every time you go out. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know if you have questions for next time or if there's something else specific you would like to see and until then, stay positive. You can do a few different things. You can just drop the toy and let them have it and let it be boring. You can let them just hang on to their... Oh, there's a weird spider outside. Sorry. Um, there's a weird bug outside my window. But anyway...